Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Minus Forum 780 XTX. And this is one that I've been really excited about because we've got a feature built in here that we haven't seen on any other mini PCs. Aside from this, having a powerful Zen 4 APU with RDNA 3 graphics, we also have Oculink support. And of course, we've been able to add Oculink to other mini PCs, but this was specifically designed and built to have access to that Oculink externally on this mini PC. So what this means is, instead of using a Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or in this case, because we are working with an AMD platform, a USB 4 external GPU, we can use an Oculink eGPU and get much better performance, and in my experience, much better compatibility. And just to give you a look here, this is our Oculink interface right here on the back of the PC. And when it comes down to the difference in speed, a USB 4 interface is up to 40 gigs per second. So that's the effective bandwidth, but usually we're actually around 32 with Oculink up to 63 because basically we've got a raw PCIe X4 connection here. And in turn, since we've got more bandwidth, we can actually get much better performance out of the same exact GPU when you compare it Oculink and USB 4 interfaces. So inside of the box, along with the 780 XTX, we do get a few things that we haven't seen before, like their brand new 120 watt power adapter, much smaller than the older ones. And yeah, I actually really do like this. The other ones were a bit bulky. We also get a mounting system here. You can set this up on the back of a monitor if you want to. Plus, they include a stand. And the stand is totally optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can set this horizontally on the desk and still access everything you want. But personally, I think it kind of sets it off. I think it looks really good in the stand here. And Oculink is also optional with this mini PC. So inside, we actually have two M.2 slots. These are uh, PCIe 4.0. And the adapter they include goes right in one of those slots. So enabling Oculink here will take away one of those storage options. But in my opinion, it would definitely be worth it if you've got an external Oculink dock. And you can actually put one together pretty cheap by picking up parts on Amazon. We'll take a look at all of that by the end of the video. But another thing I wanted to show you here was the RGB top. Now with this, we can actually customize the logo. There's several ways to go about this, and Intel did this with some of their NUX back in the day. It does come with this Tiger logo, which I think looks pretty good. But they were also kind enough to send over one with my logo on it. Really happy they sent that one over, but I've got the Tiger installed and I wanted to give you a quick look. When it comes to I.O. on the 780 XTX, up front we've got one 3.5mm audio jack, USB 4, and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. Around back we've got two more of those USB 3.2 ports, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, another USB 4 port, obviously we've got Oculink, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet and our power input and of course when it comes to the specs for that apu we've got the ryzen 7 7840hs up to 70 watts in this mini pc which is awesome their new cooling system does an amazing job eight cores 16 threads base clock of 3.8 gigahertz with a boost up to 5.1 We've also got those built-in Radeon 780M graphics. They're based on RDNA 3, 12 compute units up to 2700 MHz. This will do up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 MHz. We've also got two M.2 NVMe slots. They're Gen 4, but remember, if we use Oculink, we will be taking one of those up. Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and this one's running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box, but remember, you can also get this bare bones over on their website. I will leave a link in the description. Getting in here to upgrade that RAM and storage or even installing that Oculink adapter is really simple. It's got a magnetic top. We've got four screws on the sides here, and we can lift the uh, RGB panel right up. You will need to unplug the built-in cooling fan for the M.2 SSDs. Also helps cool that RAM off. Very easy to access that RAM. They do have a little aluminum cooler. We've also got our M.2 SSD and our extra slot. And this is where that Oculink adapter is gonna go. Really easy to install. We're just gonna place it right here in that M.2 slot. And uh, as you can see, we can actually access it from the rear of the mini PC once everything's assembled. Looks like a lot of thought went into this mini PC and I'm super excited to show you how this thing performs. The first thing we're gonna do is just test the iGPU. I wanna show you how it performs all by itself and then we'll work with an Oculink eGPU. Okay, so first things first, wanted to give you a look at the BIOS because there is a setting in here that a lot of people might wanna change right off the bat. 
This does run it up to 70 watts, but out of the box it's at 65, and I know 5 watts doesn't sound like a lot, but it can definitely help out. Got their new visual BIOS, and once you boot this up, press and delete on your keyboard will bring you here. We're going to go to Settings, Advanced, Power Configuration, and our Power Limit Setting. So out of the box, it's going to be in Balanced Mode. I'm going to go to Performance, and this is going to take it up to 70 watts. Save and Exit and we can get right into Windows. I've been a big fan of these Phoenix Point APUs since they've released, and uh, this thing is no different. We're getting some great performance, and most people out there are going to be just fine with the iGPU. These 780M graphics are awesome, and they will play AAA games. Connecting a desktop GPU is definitely going to up that performance, but uh, real quick, I'll show you the TDP here. I've got Core Temp, our power right here. Just going to run a quick stress test with CPU-Z. See it jumps up around 65, and that's because we're not pushing it completely. So if I also put a load on that GPU, right there at 70 watts with performance mode. And the cooling system here can actually handle a little more. It's not recommended by Menace Forum, but you could use a third-party app to up this just a bit and squeeze a little more performance out of it. But in performance mode, this thing is definitely putting down some power. The first game I wanted to show off here was Spider-Man Remastered. With this, I'm at 1080p, low settings, FSR set to performance, so we are using some resolution scale. And if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you can see that this does peg out around 55 watts every once in a while. But with this, we are at 60 FPS, which is really impressive for this game. Uh, if you've ever tried it on an iGPU, you know how hard it can be. But we have had a lot of updates to the game and GPU drivers, so this is looking really awesome. Next up, we've got Forza Motorsports, 1080p with a low-medium mix. We're also using FSR, that's set to performance. Since this game's release, it's really been a pain on these iGPUs. Performance is nowhere close to Forza Horizon 5 on these uh, RDNA 3 graphics, but it looks like with the recent updates, we're getting much better performance than we did. Hopefully, it gets on par with uh, Forza Horizon 5, because with that, we can actually run it at around 80 FPS with the even higher settings. I know they're using a new engine here, but keep in mind, if you don't mind playing at 900p, you can lock this down at 60 and play it all day. And finally, for the iGPU gaming portion of this video, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p low with FSR set to performance. That's really kind of been the case across the board so far with these newer AAA games. 1080 with some FSR will net you some decent performance, but with this, we can actually add a lot more GPU power and it's pretty easy to do so. The easiest way to get your hands on an Oculink e GPU is to buy one that's pre-made. My favorite right now is the uh, GPD G1. This thing is awesome. It actually supports USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and Oculink. It's a fully self-contained unit, and we've got a Radeon RX 7600 MXT, which offers outstanding performance. The next thing you could do is build your own, and that way you could actually add whatever power supply and GPU you want. This is one that I've been working on. I've been trying to get it as small as possible. It's got a low profile RTX 4060, and I'm using a Pico power supply. It all runs on 12 volts. Or you could go all out with it with something like an RTX 4080 or 4090. I've got a 700 watt power supply connected to this. It is an SFX. I've built the dock and everything and the parts I had laying around. All three of these Oculink eGPUs will add a ton of GPU performance, and if you're interested in checking out a video with this RTX 4060 super small Oculink dock, let me know in the comments below. I was thinking about making one. But for this video, we're going to be using the GPD G1 because it's going to be a lot easier on everybody. I'll leave a link in the description. I've got power from the wall going to the eGPU. We've also got video out to the monitor. Now we need an Oculink cable. They make these in several different sizes. I've got a couple smaller ones, but I kind of wanted to set these a little far apart. And the cool thing about Oculink is we can actually go much longer with this cable than we could with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So we've got the eGPU plugged in. We'll now plug it into the Oculink port. Make sure your GPU is powered up. Now we can turn on the PC. And now, instead of using the iGPU, we can utilize this RX 7600 MXT. And here it is. As you can see, we've got that 7840HS, still have 32 gigabytes of RAM, but instead of using the 780M, we've got this RX 7600MXT with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. 
and GPD recently released a few BIOS updates for the G1. I've got it installed so the GPU itself will do up to 120 watts as opposed to 90 right out of the box, so I should see some pretty good performance here. Now the first thing I wanted to show you here were a few GPU benchmarks that I ran on this unit with and without that Oculink E GPU. So here we are with 3D Mark Fire Strike on the Radeon 780M i GPU. Total score 7,897. Now this is a great score for integrated graphics, but with that 7600 MXT connected, we're now up to 26,314. And the next one I ran here was Time Spy on the integrated graphics, the 780M, 3,275, which is definitely up there with some of the higher numbers that I've seen out of this iGPU. But with the Oculink graphics card connected, we got a 10,422. So obviously, we're going to be able to crank up the settings and the resolution on those AAA games we tested with just the integrated graphics. And remember, I mean, you can add a more powerful GPU here if you build your own dock. Here's Forza Motorsports again, but instead of using integrated graphics, we're using that Oculink GPU. 1440p with a high medium mix, I averaged 89 FPS, and yeah, this looks really good here. At 1440p, I think this game is absolutely beautiful, and I could definitely take it up to Ultra, but I'd have to enable some FSR with the 7600M. Next on the list, we've got Spider-Man Remastered. Before, just on the integrated graphics, we did 1080p low with FSR set to performance, but now we're at 1440p, no FSR, very high settings, so we have this maxed out at 1440. And now, with it set up like this, we're averaging 117 FPS. And finally, here's Cyberpunk 2077 on the Oculink eGPU. Before, we were at 1080p, low settings with FSR set to performance. Now we're at high settings, 1440p with FSR set to balance, and we can average 86 FPS now. So yeah, I mean, we've got a gigantic leap in GPU performance, and obviously, I mean, we've got a more powerful GPU connected now, albeit it's connected over Oculink, but we're still seeing some outstanding performance. First impressions here on the new Elite Mini UM780 XTX, I think that uh, Minus Forum definitely knocked it out of the park once again. These guys definitely know how to do mini PCs, and adding Oculink to something like this with a very powerful Zen 4 CPU really does make a difference. If you'd like to see a few different GPUs connected to this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind making another video, but uh, that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. This is up for pre-order. Remember, you can get it bare bones, and I'll leave links to their website in the description, along with a link to the GPD G1. So uh, I'd say that would be the easiest way to get into this. But if you don't mind getting your hands dirty a little bit, you could definitely build an Oculink dock for pretty cheap, just picking the parts up on Amazon. I'll also leave those down below. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on the UM780 XTX, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.